Okay, could you tell us your name and your show? Yes. Namaste, I'm Harsh Dehaja, and I host a show called An Indian Morning at CKCU 93.1 FM Stereo. And the show began with the station. In fact, I was the first chairman of the board of CKCU, and I was the one who represented the station at CRTC along with a very enthusiastic station manager called Randy Williams. We didn't know what to do and we were so naive, but yet we got the license and we were on the air, I believe on the, in October 1973. But the show really began before 73. I think I'm mixing up dates, 75 is the date. But my show began in 1973 at a station called CKCH in what used to be called Hull, now called Gatineau. And we were doing well there till they kicked us out because we couldn't speak French. And then we went to a station called CJET in Smith's Falls. So all that happened between 73 and 75. And then in October of 1975, the show came here even as the radio station opened. Now in those days, uh, I was a very novice broadcaster and therefore I used to pre-record the show. Uh, I set up in fact a little studio in my own home in my basement with the help of a very dear friend, a very accomplished audio engineer called George Kalunko. And he set up a whole recording studio, in fact, totally soundproof and all that. And I used to pre-record the show because then I know that if I made a mistake, I could go back and correct and so on. And in, in that studio, we recorded a lot of interviews with people from the community. Uh, and I would play those interviews on the program. But, uh, and in fact, to be quite honest, the this, this studio was so good, we made a couple of long playing records right there in that studio. But before long, as my friend George always told me, saying, you are better off doing the program live. And therefore I took the plunge, came to the studio, and for the first couple of times I was shaking and nervous and didn't know which buttons to pull up and pull down and so on. But very soon it became clear to me that going live, uh, there is no substitute for that. It has a certain immediacy, a certain primacy, a certain uh, a, a life when you're doing a program live. Yes, you make mistakes, but that's part of having a live program on air, live to air. Now. The program has undergone some changes. Initially, the program was 10 to 11 every Sunday morning. And uh, in those days, in the 70s and 80s, when there was no internet, uh, I used to do about a five or seven minute newscast. And I would go to the Indian embassy, collect all the newspapers of the week, go home, collate the news, and produce a very substantial newscast of events uh, from India, political events and other events. Uh, and that was part of the show, and then I would finish off in the last 20 minutes with the, what is called Bollywood music. The first half being uh, classical, religious, devotional, and other art music as it were. So this went on for, I'd say, 10 or 15 years, and I never missed a Sunday. Even when I was out of town, I would pre-record it, and therefore not a Sunday was missed. But then I realized two things, that A, the news was not needed. People got the news uh, on the internet, on their telephones, on the computer. So my five to seven minute newscast was really not necessary. And secondly, I realized that my knowledge and expertise with Bollywood music 
was going down. I couldn't keep up with all the recent movies and the film music and so on. And therefore I started looking for a co-host who could tackle Bollywood music much better than I can. And I came upon a wonderful person, uh, a wonderful young woman called Pratibha. Pratibha was an accomplished uh, writer. She knew her Bollywood stuff. And above all, she had a beautiful voice. So that was the bill. I said, here it is. So Pratibha joined me, and I can't remember the year, but I'm going to say mid-90s. Uh, and so she would carry on the program from 10.30 to 11. But then very soon, we got another half hour. So I would do the 10 to 10.30 bit, and then she would take on from 10.30 and take it all the way to 11.30 on Sunday morning. And she was absolutely brilliant with her voice, with her uh, text which in Hindi, uh, and of course the music that she knew so well. And in this she was very ably assisted by her husband, Kishore Sampath, who was our computer person. And he would download music and text and so on. And we made it a point to feature music from India, of course, a lot of spoken word. And there, I, I'm also professor at Carlton University, an adjunct professor in uh, Hindu studies in the College of the Humanities. And therefore, I brought in a lot of spoken word. In fact, one could call my program a uh, course of Indian culture and art because I would speak extensively about painting, about sculpture, about, about uh, temples, about uh, literature, uh, ancient, modern, contemporary. Uh, and we would have interviews from India. I <clears throat> There was a person called Amin Sayani now that name doesn't make any sense to a Canadian. But Amin Sayani was the heartthrob of India in the 50s and 60s and 70s and even perhaps in the 80s. And he would hold all of India in his hand as he did his countdown radio program. So I would go up to India quite often and have him record little uh, interviews for us. And he had a whole library of interviews with film stars and other film personalities. And so I would buy those from him and play it on the radio. Uh, I'm just gonna cut real quick. 